This month's free miniature of the month is none other than an insatiable termagant. Scuttling predators that attack in huge swarms, termagants overcome their prey with a hail of firepower. We'll be using just 10 paints to get this miniature ready to devour biomass on the tabletop in no time. So the first thing we need to do is undercoat the miniature and for this we've chosen to use Wraithbone. This works well as a warm undercoat for us to apply the other paints over. You'll also need a pot of Wraithbone to hand as this will help us if we need to tidy up any mistakes later on. The paints you'll need to follow along with this guide are listed on screen now. We'll be painting this miniature in the colours of the High Fleet Leviathan. We'll be using the colours to match the box art, but feel free to use your imagination and paint your miniature however you like. Also on screen now are the additional tools we've used. These are our recommendations, but feel free to use whatever brushes you're most comfortable with. And if you don't have mediums at home, you can swap them out for water. If you're new to painting, you can check out the Citadel Colour Painting Essentials videos to learn all about painting. Now even though we've already undercoated with Wraithbone from the spray can, we're going to start off the guide by painting the whole model with Wraithbone from the pot. This might seem a little strange, but the spray can and the pot have slightly different finishes. So if we do this now, it means we can easily tidy up mistakes later on. For this, we're using a small base brush. We don't need to worry about being neat, but we do need to make sure we get into all those tricky to reach areas. Wraithbone is a base paint, so we need to thin it down with a little bit of water. This will give us a smoother consistency and avoid clogging up any fine detail on the miniature. We'll then need to apply a layer or two to get a full coverage. The next thing we're going to do is use Magos Purple Thin Down with Contrast Medium, and we'll be applying this all over the flesh of the model. Again, we don't need to worry about being neat. We'll be painting over all the other details anyway. So for this, we're using a medium shade brush as this will help us avoid brush strokes. We'll be using two parts contrast medium and one part Magos Purple. This will give us a nice subtle mix which won't overpower the Wraithbone undercoat. When you're applying contrast paint, work quickly and neatly in small sections on the miniature. This will avoid it drying out too quickly anywhere which could create lines on the surfaces. Just be careful to control the pooling of the paint. If you find it's pooling in the recesses too much, clean off your brush and use that to soak up the excess. Once that's fully dry, we'll then use Magos Purple straight from the pot and we'll just pop this into some of those recesses. Just be careful with this and make sure you only get it into those recessed areas. This will just add some more depth and interest to the model. Once that's completely dry, we're then going to dry brush Corax White all over the model. We're doing this now so that we can be messy and not worry about messing up any details that we paint later on. When we're doing this, we want this to be a really subtle dry brush, so make sure you remove as much paint off the brush as possible onto a paper towel. Then lightly brush over the raised details of the miniature. This will catch all those raised details and create a highlight. It's best to start off with a really subtle dry brush and we can build this up with multiple layers until we're happy with the effect. If we dry brush too heavily to start with, this can be a little bit tricky to correct. We're using a small dry brush here so that we can get into all that detail really easily. Now this is a base paint, but you can absolutely dry brush with both base and layer paints. Just take a little bit more time in making sure you've got as much paint removed off the brush as possible. With that done, we can now paint that purple carapace. For this, we'll be using Nagaroth Knight. At this point, you might find it easier to switch to a smaller brush. A small base brush for the larger areas and a medium layer brush for the more intricate details works really well here. But do use whatever you're most comfortable with. Again, this is a base paint, so we do need to thin it down with some water and apply a few layers. Take your time around the details that we've already finished painting. We can always correct mistakes with the previous colours, but it will save us time if we're a little bit neater to start with. With that done, you can see the model's really starting to come together. So let's carry on with some more base coats. Now we're going to paint the hooves, the claws, and the weapon carapace. And we'll be painting this in Abaddon Black. Again, a medium layer brush works really well here as it's large enough that we can paint quite quickly and small enough to help us be neat. This is a strong color and we're painting it next to that very pale flesh. So just take your time and be as neat as you can. If you do make any mistakes, just reapply Wraithbone to the flesh and then go back over with that Magos Purple mix. Now it's time to paint that tongue and for this we'll be using Bugman's Glow. 
Don't forget to give your paints a good shake before you use them. This will make sure that they're properly mixed and gives us a smooth consistency. This is a small area so make sure you've got a good point on your brush and just take your time around the other details. We'll soon be applying a shade over this area which will bring it all together. Next we're going to use Berserker Bloodshade and Lamian Medium to paint the weapon and also some fleshy details on the model. So the first way we're going to use this paint is thin down with Lamian Medium. We're going to use two parts medium to one part Berserker Bloodshade. We'll be applying this all over that weapon. This will give us a more subtle effect and won't overpower that wraith bone. We're going to be adding some more layers shortly to create a gradient, but you can absolutely leave it here if you want to. So the next thing we're going to do is thin down one part Lamia Medium and one part Berserker Bloodshade. This will give us a slightly stronger pigment. And what we'll do with this is build up multiple layers towards the edges of the weapon. As you can see, this creates a really simple and effective gradient. If you get any shade anywhere that it shouldn't be, if you act quickly, you can fix it really easily. As soon as you notice the mistake, clean off your brush and keep it a little bit damp. Then wipe this over the shade that we want to remove. If we've caught it quickly enough, this should take the shade straight off the area. However, don't worry if you don't quite catch it quickly enough, just reapply the Wraith Bone and the Magos Purple again. Once we're happy with the gradient on the weapon, we're then going to take Berserker Bloodshade straight from the pot and we'll be applying this onto that tube on the weapon, as well as into the recessed fleshy details of the model. And we're also going to apply this into the mouth. Now you might have noticed that applying that shade into the mouth has darkened down the teeth a little bit, so we're going to use Corax White to just pick them out again. Using a small brush, just thin down the paint and take your time. Doing this will just help them stand back out from the rest of the area. Now we're going to paint those unnerving yellow eyes and we're going to use Iandan Yellow for this. Taking it straight from the pot, we'll be applying this straight to the eyes. And we'll also be applying it to the eye on the weapon too. We want to apply this heavily and neatly, taking care not to get it on any of the other details. Then we need to control the pooling and we're going to do this by cleaning off the brush and using it to soak up the excess. If we soak up the excess from the centre of the eye, the paint will pull away from the middle and create a bit of a glowy effect. Before you do this, it's a good idea to just paint the areas back in Wraith Bone. The contrast paint needs a solid base coat to go over properly. Now your termigant is looking fantastic. You certainly wouldn't want to encounter a swarm of these biological killing machines. If you'd like to stop here and start rolling dice with your models on the gaming table, you absolutely can. However, if you'd like to taint this paint job up a notch, keep watching. Now, if you've got loads of termigants to paint, the chances are you might not fancy edge highlighting every single one of them, and that's totally understandable. So it's really up to you how much of the following stages you want to do. You could do a few highlights, you could do none, or you could even dry brush on the colours instead. Either way, whatever you choose to do, your models will still look great on the gaming table. Now for the purposes of this video, we are only painting one termagant, so we're going to demonstrate how to do the edge highlights. So if you do want to spend any extra time on any of your Tyranids, this is a really useful technique to know. So for the first edge highlight, we're going to use Thunderhawk Blue to highlight the black. Using the smallest brush you're comfortable with, just thin down your paint until you've got a nice consistency. You want it to glide off the brush, and feel free to test this on your palette before you apply it to the model. Where you can, use the edge of your brush and just glide it along the edges and this will create the highlight really quickly and easily. There are also some other lines and details on those black areas and we can pick those out in Thunderhawk Blue as well. However, again, it's up to you whether you do this or not or whether you just do a little bit of it. And don't worry if your highlights aren't perfect the first time, just go back in with some Abaddon Black and correct any mistakes. Now if you want to know how to highlight that dark purple carapace, stick with us, we're going to use Warp Fiend Grey. This is exactly the same process as before, make sure you've got a good consistency of paint and a good point on that brush. This colour works really well to highlight Nagaroth Knight, it's not too bright but still gives us a really effective highlight. And the last thing we can do is apply a dot of Wraith Bone to the eyes. 
Eyes are tricky, but they're well worth the challenge. Just make sure you've got a good point on your brush and a good paint consistency. When you're doing this, it helps to have a really stable painting position. And if you're able, hold your breath while you're applying the dot too. Now your termagant is finished, painted in the colours of High Fleet Leviathan and ready to devour every last shred of biomass in its path. And remember, using the colours in this guide, you can paint your entire Tyranid collection in the High Fleet Leviathan colours. You can see that our model is based using Armageddon Dust, and if you'd like to learn more about basing, you can check out our video all about technical paints. Well, we hope you've enjoyed the video, and we'll see you next time. Bye!